can't you just stay somewhere for a second so I can take a picture? Welcome back to the Arabella Boathouse. This week, Steve gets back to woodworking inside the boat, starting with the area behind the settee berth. And then he'll get a few panels of the sole fit into the galley area before making up a base for the fridge. And his friend Jeff gets started on the hanging locker in the forepeak. I got all psyched up to run the conduit here on the starboard side and I realized that it might be a little wiser to wait. Uh, and the reason for that is we patterned out a water tank to go in here and I would love for the conduit to run underneath the nav table on top of the water tank. I think there's enough room, but that's the thing. I think there's enough room. Uh, so I'm a little hesitant to run that and drill through the bulkhead because if the if there isn't enough room, I can run it on top of the nav table out against the hull, uh, and I would just need to build a box to cover it, which isn't really a big deal. Uh, but I'm not quite sure which avenue to go. And I have the same issue here in the head, because uh, there's a water tank that goes in, and we're going to want that electrical line to run just above that water tank. Uh, and I'm not 100% sure where that's going to land, and I don't want to drill holes in the bulkhead unless I know that's where they need to be. Um, but thankfully, Evan is supposed to start the water tanks next week, and it sounds like it's not going to take him too, too long to do them. So this isn't <clears throat> a gargantuan delay. If I kind of just hit pause on the starboard side for a minute, uh, which leads me to kind of really wrapping up the electrical on the port side and starting to put in some of the junction boxes. But that leads me to a little bit of a, another conundrum. <laughs> So we got the conduit run here on the port side, and the next step is to go in and install the junction boxes for the connections and attach these little adapters to the ends of the PVC. And then we also need to take these PVC connectors and install them into the junction boxes and glue them. That way we can mount these junction boxes very solidly we can put these in, and then the conduit will just screw into the junction boxes. And that'll make all of this really, really easy to, to snake new lines in the future and to move conduit around if you have to. Um, and it'll keep all the wires very nicely protected. Now my, my issue is to mount the junction boxes, I kind of need to know how all of this is going to shape up back here. Uh, so we're going to have a junction box back here for the lights and the electrical and the DC outlets, the fans, that kind of thing. Uh, we're going to put another small junction box down lower, uh, and that's going to be for the one inch line that runs up to the mast. And we're going to want to put another junction box over in this corner so that we can pull an out for the 12 volt fan on the Dickinson heater uh, and we're also going to have you know a couple of lights and things over in this corner. Uh, so we're going to want to get those two junction boxes, actually three junction boxes mounted and installed. Um, but to do that I got to kind of know how all this is going to shape up. All right, here is one of the many treasure troves from Victoria. And this it's going to go back basically exactly where it was in Victoria. So this was behind the settee bunks, uh, and this would have been on the port side because that's the, the big end that was midships and the smaller end that went forward. Uh, we've got all of the doors to go in. So I think we just got to cut this down to size because right now I know for a fact that this is too long for the Dickinson. Uh, but I think if we cut these off in line with the style, I think this section here and the four doors that go in, I think that'll work pretty brilliantly. So let's get this nipped and uh, go see how that looks.
All right, so that'll get a cleat. That'll go on the bulkhead. That's real easy. Describe this bottom, drop it down to the build stringer. That's real easy. Little bracket on the build stringer. No problemo. So this isn't going to be quite level, but I don't think I want to match the deck beams. Uh, and I think it's really going to mess when you see these doors are going to seem askew compared to the bunk. Uh, so I think having this close to the bunk visually will be better than having it kind of matching the deck beam. I think it'll be more functional as well. So I really got to figure out that far end and how it's going to play with the Dickinson. Uh, this part here should be should be pretty straightforward and easy, and I think I'll have a great spot underneath here to keep the conduit going. Uh, I'll be able to tuck the box in the back, but i gotta got to figure that corner out. I think that's going to take a few minutes. added some cleats across the bottom here and a shelf will go in here and that'll cover up all the conduit uh, and we had to make this little divider here so that's just a couple mahogany boards that are screwed together held together with the cleats uh, and this just adds some support to the shelf above it uh, and makes a divider so that it's not just one giant locker 
Uh, you don't have stuff rolling from one end to the other. And then this space up here will end up being a shelf. Uh, so we've got a really huge mahogany board here. Uh, we got a nice fit in the front. And there's going to be a wood trim that will get fit in here uh, to go from the shelf up to the clamp uh, and cover up the top edge of this plastic. Uh, so now that this is figured out, I can confidently and comfortably place the junction box in there against this bulkhead and make sure that we have enough clearance. And I got all set to do that and drill the holes to put in the fittings and realize that these fittings are a very oddball size. So in uh, imperial measurements, they are 1 and 9 sixteenths. And I don't know about you, but I don't stock a 1 and 9 sixteenths bit in my kit uh, as everyday use. It's a pretty funky size. While we're on pause with the conduit, I'm going to work on the base for the refrigerator and the companionway stairs and the sole. Uh, so right now back here we've got, as we said before, a lot going on and I'm standing where the refrigerator is going to go, which finally done with. I put the last couple coats of paint on that and Robin and I just carried it out to the boathouse. So that's ready to come in. But before that can go in, and we need a little pedestal for it to sit on and we need to have the sole defined. So if we look down here, what we've had for the sole so far is just these rough cut two inch boards and we've glued up some mahogany and some cherry and they're going to be thinner they're going to be about one inch so the sole the whole floor of the boat is going to drop about an inch from where it is now and when we put the refrigerator in it bumps against these two frames so we need to bring the base of the refrigerator up just a little bit if we come up too high we're going to get higher than the counter which we don't want to do so it's a very narrow margin here. Uh, so before I can build that base, we need to know exactly where the sole is going to be. So I've been working on gluing up the uh, mahogany and the cherry for the sole. Uh, and I got a couple sole beams here to install. And we'll be able to put in that cherry mahogany sole, define the exact height of the sole. Then that'll determine the height of the pedestal that the refrigerator sits on. Then I'll be able to put the refrigerator on the pedestal. And once the height of the refrigerator in relation to the sole is perfectly dialed in, we can build the companionway stairs. Uh, but all of that needs to play very well together and an inch here, an inch there is gonna make a big difference. And this is kinda my take on teak and holly. So it's very traditional to do a teak and holly sole inside of a boat where you do some wider boards of teak and narrow strips of holly. We don't have teak or holly here locally, uh, but what we do have is a literal boatload of mahogany from Victoria and a bunch of cherry. So this is the underside. You can see this is where the caulking grooves were from the decking. And the other side is where we had ripped it on the table saw with Aaron's help. So this side we'll put down and we don't need to even plane out all of the caulking grooves. That'll be fine. And this upper side, we just have to run through enough that we're all nice and flat. And the sole should end up being about an inch thick when it's done, which considering the supports are one foot on center should be, should be plenty. Smells like old boat, huh? Yeah. And I'll finish with a strip. So when all glued together, this gives us a little over 13 inches and the planer can do 15. So that'll give us a little wiggle room and we can run these through. Uh, and we've got four foot runs and two foot runs because we don't want to make any giant lengths in the sole. We want the whole thing to be able to lift up and come out so we don't need terribly long pieces. And we'll cut all the mahogany to length later uh, once they're all glued up.
I've got the sole laid out, I think, the way I want it here. So these, these middle two here will get set so that they can lift out. And I need to pattern out this long one here so that it meets the hull and meets up with this other one here. And this long one here will end up getting cut eventually into a couple smaller pieces so that we can have lift outs kind of like we have there in the stern. And the runs on the very sides are going to get attached down to the sole beams and those will stay put. But that should give us very solid access down to the bilge. Got some cardboard here. And the next step is going to be to make a really good pattern. Because we've got to get that long one against the hull to fit up really nice and snugly with the, uh, with the frames and the planking. And that is going to take a little bit of work and a really, really good pattern. done a few rounds of marking and measuring and as I'm marking and measuring I'm being very careful to make sure that this stays parallel with the center line. I don't want these stripes to end up getting off of center. Uh, so every time I put this down I'm referencing those center lines and then pulling my marks and just slowly working this outboard. I'm at the point now where I need to put the bevels uh, where it's meeting the frames and it's meeting the planking and start honing in on that. But this panel isn't quite wide enough for over here. So I actually have the off cut from this end. I'm going to rip the cherry off it. I'm going to glue those couple pieces of mahogany and little tip of cherry onto that side. And then that will be wide enough. I'll cut this little gap out after it's glued. Uh, and then I can put the bevel on the back and fit this whole thing. Once that one's fit, we put the center and onto the other side. And as with most things, every one of these will go quicker than the one before. So while Steve kept up work on the sole pieces, Jeff from down the road came by for a couple of days to start work on the hanging locker for the four peak berth. So we'll make like a one and a half by <clears throat> two, two by two kind of mm -hmm. cleat mm -hmm. and we'll bolt it to the bulkhead here. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then we can take a piece of mahogany very similar to this trim. Yep. Put that this way. <clears throat> on that right. Attached it. We can screw it to the cleat and then the cleat will get bolted to the bulkhead. And then these hinges here. Right. Where those go, we'll just get attached, attached to, to that. To that. 
right. and then we'll just build in probably a little mahogany bulkhead yep. that cuts just over that space. And then we've got a louvered <clears throat> door here that I'm going to build into that mahogany bulkhead so mm -hmm. that there's some ventilation. Yeah. And that will yep. just go mount on that face. That's going to mount on that face. Yep. That's good. Cool. And anything you have any questions about or unsure about? <laughs> oh, I'm going to have lots of questions. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> I'm yeah. going to be right here just working on fitting pieces of the I, soul. Uh, so. Yeah, I will have lots of questions. <laughs> Fitting the sole wasn't too bad. I mean, it never comes out as tight as you want it to. Like, uh, see some folks work, and every time it seems like it just fits totally flawlessly, and it's not my work. It fits well enough. Uh, one thing that I did realize is that the bent frames all land a little bit different. So if you try to make the sole pieces fit precisely tight to each one, it's actually impossible to slide it in and out uh, because they end up just locking it in. So you could fit, you know, pieces perfectly tight in between each one, but you can't have one piece that slides in and out without having a little bit of play around it, which is just a spot that we're going to have to keep on top of with the vacuum or whatever, make sure it doesn't become a spot that collects junk, but that is part of life. So with the galley sole fitted, work could start on a simple pedestal for the fridge. There will be room down the road to put a drawer for storage underneath. And the plastic runners that you can see on the bottom are the same as for the workbench drawers. And they'll let the whole unit slide forward when any serious work needs to get done on the engine. It's almost three quarters. I'll zip off three quarters of each. back there with the refrigerator in place. Sure. And then I put plastic runners on the bases of these. So you can slide it if you need to. Yeah, so if you need to work on say the diesel. Yep. 
you would just take the refrigerator and this whole base. Yeah. And I would all just slide so forward. Right. Yeah. Cool. So let me pull a measurement for what I need to take off. Drop that down and then pull and we'll it we'll hand it all back out. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Throw the lids in there, and then I think this can stay put. I'll build the stairs, and then we can take this out. We can take the base out, and everything can go to paint and varnish yep. and get all of that done. And then it can all come in and get installed. And then we'll just have to cut some nice thick cardboard to cover up the finished floor in here. Mm -hmm. For the meantime, yeah. 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 There we go. Nice. Keep easy. Lemon squeezy. Want to have this lid done? Sure, sure. People are wondering what to do if the boat is like capsizing or I whatever still, else. It's like a life raft. Well, no, I'm looking at the, these lids and people are wondering what kind of angle you can get on these lids before they come out. And I just want to, y'all. <laughs> okay. So even if this boat was sitting careened between tides, the lids aren't coming out. No. Oh, right. I got you. Okay. And yeah, okay, if you pitch pull the boat, maybe something will happen. But well, it's I the will, least of your concerns. I will that. figure out some sort of latch for the lids uh, for when you're, like, really going to go offshore and there's a chance of, like, a knockdown or a roll. Uh -huh. But all that needs to be is just a little piece of wood here and here and there with a screw that you just slide over. Mm -hmm. I was it even needs thinking that a strap that, a just, strap that, that over has the top. an automatic, yeah. has a something, and then it goes. A bungee cord? Mm -hmm. That's it. It doesn't yeah. need much. It doesn't need much. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the chances of it, like like you just said, I mean, you just tipped it up enough that they're not going to just fall But that out. shape, no. that, I see that shape in almost any boat I've ever yeah. been on. Yeah, and that's. And it doesn't. In any move. day use, that's not it's good. good. Uh, well, when you think about when you think about the, like, you know, this average angle, yeah. you know, got to even be 90 degrees, you're tipped up already quite a bit. You know what I mean? It's, I don't know. Yeah. Like this, this is flat right now, you know? Yeah. So, to, so to get it so that that angle is pushing out on that, on that yeah, hatch, it's got to be way over. Yeah. But this will be nice, like provisioning or cleaning, being able to open the whole lid, get mm -hmm. to something in the very bottom. Clean things out really well. Take a bath. Take a bath. Well, I'll tell you, if the boat was capsizing or sinking and you had enough time, you definitely could unhook the refrigerator <laughs> and throw it out because this thing is going to float pretty much <laughs> throw a little forever. ballast. Yes. <laughs> you want to balance it. Yeah, you want to But you could bop around, just put your head just out the hatch, right? Just, the hatch. <laughs> just put the bungee cord on. Just like, <laughs> put this one yeah. down. Steve, get it. We need a proof of concept. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think you got something. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs>